Explain what a mukbang is. This is when Chinese people eat noodles on camera, right? It's a variety of Asian cultures. Um, I believe mukbang is a Korean word. And Lucy sends these to me because she knows how much they gross me out. And it's just they get the mic really loud and then they'll eat noodles or fried chicken or like some any you can eat anything on a mukbang, a lasagna. So I'm doing an NSNG mukbang right now. With my I favorite think, ultra fat. And I think I saw a mukbang the other day with uh, actress Nina Hartley and the painter himself. It was a porn film. And um, <laughs> yeah, Mr. North was eating out Miss Hartley. And uh, no, that's not that's heard, not the, that's not the mukbang going that's on. A, that's a bang bang. This is a mukbang. No, the, there was a mukbang. I heard some. <laughs> well, OK, get ready, because that's what I'm about to do. Yeah, go. OK, first of all. If it was real mukbang, I would crank the mic up really loud and I would have ripped the thing off in real time, but I already had a bite. So I'm going to, here's the. She's got a, she's got an ultra fat in her hands. You have to whisper if you're going to do it because it's supposed to be relaxing. She's going to, she's going to squeeze my nuts. Here we go. (laughs) (laughs) A little louder, Anna. Get more. Turn up, more. turn up more level. Turn up more level. I, I, I got uh, I think all the way up. Here we, here we go. Get By the way, this will be your experience when you guys get ultra fat and you eat it. Yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead again. It's so good. <laughs> all right. Anna, you want me to mukbang too? Yeah. Okay. Mukbang Do- your coffee. All right. Wait, hang on. Do a Villa Capelli ad. Um. <laughs> I'm loving this. Do a Villa Capelli ad. I'm going to go upstairs and grab something to mug. That bong. sounds like bong, like I'm taking a bong hit, but I'm not. I was just taking a sip of water for those of you who are on the audio. Okay, should I mug bong next week? You did it this week. I'll do it next week. Uh, every week we should mug. You can mug bong some sauce. I'll send you some sauce. No, I, I have some here, but uh, I have you. That's right. I was going to go upstairs and grab your sauce, but I don't think that the audience can handle. Here she goes again, folks. <laughs> it's surprisingly not like that loud of a product. No, you you you're you're exaggerating to get the sound mm-hmm. out. Yeah. I just had myself the coffee flavor. I was on my way to to work out a little bit, and uh, I had done some the vanilla right here. Morning and, all right, so Anna, let's get on with the show before. Okay. Uh, the, the Turn my of- levels down so I can actually eat this in peace. While you rant about something, turn, turn your mic off. Um, so every Monday night, Serena goes off and she um, she goes sing, you know, she belongs to a choir and they practice for several hours and they, they start at around six on Monday night and they go until 10 or 11. So I'm pretty much a bachelor on Monday nights and I'm always cooking meat here for lunch or fish or whatever. And Serena usually makes dinner because that's when I'm podcasting and then we have dinner. So I use Monday night as kind of my bachelor night out. I'll go to a local haunt and enjoy something to eat. You know, and I'm, all, I'm always trying to find a, a different place. But I'm a creature of habit. And if you guys remember, I don't know if I talked about it on the show, but like a couple of weeks ago, I went to this place and I ordered a piece of fish. Did we talk about it on the show, Anna? Uh, no. If you go back and look at my Instagram somewhere, it's I think it's on there. I ordered a piece of salmon and it was so tiny that I put my thumb next to it to give it some some, you know, brevity so you can see what we're dealing with here, right? Mm-hmm. And l- my thumb looks bigger than and look, I wasn't like holding my thumb back and holding the phone back. I had it all really upsetting. Close. Um, so I, I did that and I put it up on, on the Twitter and on, I think my Instagram of going, wow, I, you know, I'm in a restaurant. I'm going to look at it. Wait, the- this is, this is a restaurant, like just like a place, a sit down place where they wait on you kind of thing. And they yeah, just brought a, you a crappy piece of salmon. A, a place called, I, I'll say the name of the place called Burton's. It's in town here. I, I don't see it on my Instagram. I don't know. Burton's where- needs to step up their fish game. Then I think I put it on my Twitter. Um, 
Let's see if I can find a photo and send it to you, Anna, because it's really kind of a joke. Um, so I did that. And, you know, we put it up on, on the Instagram or whatever the other day. And uh, people were like, oh, that's ridiculous. And all this kind of stuff, right? So anyway, they brought me a second piece of face. Burton's made it right. You know, exactly. the girl came over, she, she, she gave me a half of an excuse of, oh, that's the size. And, you know, we measure each piece. And I simply <laughs> said, like to her, not the size. I said, listen, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to argue with you. But does this look like a normal serving to you? I know you guys measure maybe a little busy in the back. Someone just slipped by. I said, does this look like a normal size piece of face to you? If it does, I'm good. She goes, we'll fire you up another piece. So mm -hmm. I had that piece and they brought me a second piece and um, I enjoyed my fish. Okay. Well, this Monday came and I said to Serena, I said, you know what? Because of what happened at Burton's, I want to I wanna really stretch a little. I want to go find another place. I want to see, because I, I'm a, a creature of habit. So yeah, I went, ah, I don't feel like going. I don't know. And Serena goes, go over to that place. I don't want to mention the name of the place because people are already figuring out where I live. Um, I go to <laughs> another place and there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of, uh, you know, places within a place, right? It's like a food court. Right. And there's a place called Citizen Burger. Are you familiar with Citizen Burger? No. This? Maybe it's just- Is that just a Delmarva thing? It's kind of like, uh, you know, it's just your basically hamburger. It's a hamburger joint. Okay. I first walked into like, when I walked into the, the place, there was a brew house. And I went, oh, obviously, you know, they're, they're serving beer. They got to have a hamburger there, right? I right. walked in there and I sat down. I went, hey, um, can I have a menu? And they were like, no, you got to use the thing and put your phone over the thing. They already lost me. And I said, well, they go, what, what type of beer would you like? I said, well, I don't really drink beer, but I would like a menu. It's like, well, the beer menu? I said, no, the food. No, we don't have food. It's like, you have no food. You just serve beer. That This whole place, <laughs> just beer. Was it just college students in there? No, it was like, it, it's a beer. How do you get 20 different, 30 different beers? And she goes, well, we also have wine. I said, oh, the other drink I don't drink. Okay, so <laughs> I walked out and I see Citizen Burger. Do you see it there somewhere? You, you're finding it on the internet? I, I found it on the thing, but I thought my little niece who goes to UVA, she, I thought I recently saw her post a burger from there, but I can't find it from Citizen's well, Burger. I went there and I said to the lady behind the counter, um, how, how big are the burgers? And she said, you mean in ounces? I said, yeah, that, that would help. And she goes, three ounces. And I said, no, the, the regular size burgers. She goes, yeah. Three ounces is tiny. Are they sliders? Well, no, I said, I said, I see many burgers. She goes, no, that's the regular size burger. It's three ounces. I said, so three ounces. And she goes, that's it. I said, okay. And I looked at the price and the price was kind of high and I'm hungry. So I said, okay, I would like three of the burgers and please put a piece of cheese between each one, just stack them on top of each other. And I don't want a bun. She goes, you want fries? I said, no, I just want three burgers stacked on each other with a piece of cheese on each one. I want it to look like a cake, like a stack of pancakes. And she goes, I get this. Okay. And I went, is there something wrong with that? And she was like, well, it sounds odd. I said, you're right. Put a tomato on top. So, <laughs> She did. And I got my three burgers and um, they were tasty. I mean, it's fucking hamburger and cheese. How, how can it right. not be tasty? Right. And I'm sitting there eating my three burgers. It took me three, maybe six bites to, to, to consume this non meal. And right. I start looking around at other people and they're enjoying their burger and I'm looking at it and they have a big bun. And they have the whole thing, you know, like a bun, they got tomato, they got lettuce and the whole thing. And it looks like something. So I went up to the lady when I was done. I said, what are they having? She goes, the citizen burger, same thing you had three of. And I said, but that's how big it, they make it look really big. 
Well, I'm confused because their menu says they're half pound burgers. That's not true. Uh, three ounces, Anna. That's ridiculous. Three ounces. So I was, I, I, I don't know. That's what they gave me. I got through. And by the way, that was like 20 some odd dollars worth of food. Nine ounces of hamburger meat. I'm sure it was. They charged me like 20. By the time I gave the woman a couple right. of tip, I was like $27. And you, and you could have gotten a pound of grass fed beef for $9 and just cooked it at home. Well, what I did was I went right over to the grocery store and did what I always do. I said, give me four packs of 10 ounces of ground beef because I like 10, 10 ounces is about the size for me, right? It's like, I can either have one or if Serena wants, I can have two. Yeah. So I got four of those. I came home and cooked up one of those and, you know, got myself nice and, and fixed right. up there. Okay. So they have the bun. They have the sauces. Everything you fries. want. Of course, they got the fries. And you see, you, you get what I'm getting at, right? It's very oh, yeah. small amount of protein. And you got all of this carbohydrate and the fries and the whole thing. That's how, you know, they're selling you this expensive thing. And all they're giving you is a bunch of carbs with a little sliver of hamburger. And I started thinking about that, that piece of fish I got that just the, the day before mm -hmm. uh, the week before, I'm sorry. And it's like, wow, you know, Serena keeps telling me about this shrinkflation, right? Where you pay the same price, but they're shrinking your sizes. Yeah. Yeah, this is the new thing to shrink. Flavor. Like you can't find a gallon of ice cream anymore. It's all uh, what is a gallon? 16. ounce? I don't know what it is. 32 ounces, but it should no, no, be a, a gallon, seven ounces. A gallon is 164. But no, you're talking about a, a, pint, a, a pint. A no, pint. No, I'm talking about remember when we were kids, if you were lucky, you got a gallon of like Breyers vanilla ice cream, right? They sold it in gallon sizes. And now they've shrunk down to like, they're like little boxes that aren't quite gallons, but they're not the pints either. Right. You know what uh, I'm talking about, right? There was a yeah, gallon of vanilla ice cream. Is, a gallon is 128 ounces. Is the okay. point well, making. whatever it is, it ain't 128 when, when ounces. You, when, you, when you get a pint, a pint, you know, like, I, I, I know that most pints of are probably you, skinnier now. Right. Well, pints aren't pints. They're not giving you a pint of 16 ounces. They're giving you like 14 ounces. Right. If you buy ice cream or whatever. Everything that they've done it, this, everything that you're used to buying by the pound has now been shrunk down. Right. It, it's off, but they kept the, the per and you can always tell by the per ounce price because you're like, oh, that's less money. Yeah. Yeah. So but, that's what they're doing. And uh, so it hit me twice within seven days. And I'm like, and, and you know, I'm a guy. I've always said if I was, you know how they always go around the politicians and they'll say, how much is a box of cereal? And I'm sitting there going, I have no idea what a box of cereal costs. I'm sure yeah. the politician wouldn't know because, no. you know, so I'm always going, why are you asking politics? He didn't know what a box of cereal costs. Okay. Neither do I. Right. Yeah. Because I don't buy cereal. And if I did, I would think that it's a nominal cost because it's crap in the box. Right. And it's subsidized by the government. So it's kind of irrelevant what it costs. What you know what it costs, whatever it costs to uh, get sick from eating so much sugars and grains. That's what it costs. So, Anna, I'm, I'm thinking about it for a day or two. This happened this Monday. And on Wednesday, I finished my workout. I had a couple of phone calls coming up and I wanted to get out of the house for a few minutes. So I drove around and I see this place five guys. I've heard of that one. That's a chain. All right. I think citizen is a chain. I feel like I had five guys when I landed at Dulles airport, when my mom passed away and I was trying to get to the hospital before she passed away. And I hadn't had anything in like 24 hours. I went to five guys and I ordered two hamburger patties and two pickles. Cause I couldn't have the sauce or the dairy or anything. And they were right. like, Okay, lady. And that was six or seven years ago. They thought I was nuts. Well, I found the five guys. And I went in there because I purposely wanted to see what size the hamburger would be. So I walked up to the counter and I said to the guy, I would like myself one of these hamburgers. How many ounces? And he goes 3.7 ounces. I said, three, 3.7. 
Yep, each hamburger patty is three point seven ounces. And then he said, "By the way, is that before it's cooked?" I didn't even ask. I, I can guarantee you because you know it loses the fat and then it's even lighter. Right. Well, I, I'm pretty sure all of this is pre-cooked because I remember way back when with the quarter pounder at McDonald's, mm -hmm. they would they would write this is pre-cooked pre weight. weight. Right. I right. remember that on the ads. So, yeah. So the guy goes three point seven ounces and then he says this. It's a quarter of a pound. And I said, no, it's not. He goes, yeah, three point seven ounces, a quarter of a pound. I said, um, <laughs> Sir, um, that's not a quarter of a pound. He goes, no, it, it is. 16 divided by four is four. Really? I said a quarter of a pound would be four ounces. A half a pound is eight ounces. So how, how do you take half from eight and end up with 3.7? He goes, sir, I'm sorry. It's a quarter of a pound. And I said, uh, <laughs> are, are we having shrinkflation with the kids math lessons? I said, uh, hmm. I was going to say something that was going to come out racist. So I'm not going to, even though I don't mean it to be racist. Don't do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm saving you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm saving Bill from having to cut it out. <laughs> so I said, no, it's not. It's not. 3.7 is nothing. It's not a quarter of a pound. It's full. And we went back and forth. And then he told me, he goes, well, you're the customer. So we'll just say you're right. It's like, no, I'm actually right. <laughs> and I said, uh, may I please not have a customer thing? It's just it's truth. It's science. It's right. math. It was like I didn't make I didn't walk in here to badger you, sir. I, I, it's not like you're the one bending the laws of the universe. Yeah. And, and I'm like, I'm sitting there and I'm just kind of halfway glad that someone showed up to work because we're having trouble getting That's people true. to show up to work at my company. Yeah. And I'm like, well, at least this kid is showing up for a job. And um, <laughs> The hamburgers came out. They were actually smaller than the ones I got at Citizen Burger. I only yeah. bought two of them. Now, I didn't feel quite as bad because the two of them ended up costing me ten dollars in total. Ten dollars and right. something cents. As opposed to twenty dollars for three. Yeah, it was twenty six dollars for three. So this if I had gotten another one, it would have gotten me to fifteen dollars. So had I gotten right. three. But I got two and I was still hungry and it was like should I get another two, maybe four? Mm -hmm. and I'm like, no, I went back home and I cracked open another one of my that the, the, the moral of the story is there's no reason for me to leave the house. I'm I'm literally becoming no. Howard Hughes. You I don't need to leave the house. I, 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 I don't want to leave the house anymore. Um, Except for to get, get to groceries. There's no reason to leave the house. I, 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 I feel the exact same way. So it's not just me, right? Well, also, you have the issue. I know Serena does a lot of good cooking and, and you know how to make some things now. Thank God. But like generally, unless it's a specialty food item or like a Michelin star situation, I make things better at home. And and so I just it has to be like we're either having dinner with friends or you know what I mean? It has to be like there is a reason behind we're going to this place. And even then, I'm super picky about it. And, and most of the times, I'll be honest with you, I'm disappointed. Anna, do me a favor. And I've spent a lot of money. I can spend money at a restaurant because here's the thing. I don't buy expensive shoes. I don't have jewelry. I don't have designer clothes. But when I go to a restaurant, I want to order the ribeye that I want to order and I don't want to hear any trouble about it. That's my splurge. Anna? Yeah. Pull out your calculator on your, on your little device here. Okay. All Happy right. To. So... 3.7. Don't don't write this down. I'm doing 3.7 mm -hmm. times three. Okay. okay. I want you to put in 26 on your divided by 11.1. No, no, no. I just want you to put in 26. Okay. Got it. Okay. Now I'm going to do plus four because my fish, the woman, was explained to me it was four ounces. That, that's how much fish. All right, I want you to put in 28. Okay. And um, <clears throat> my two. Oh, wait, I did this wrong already. I know you did. All right. So so it's nine ounces of hamburger. So all right, let's go nine back. ounces at citizens 
right, 11 point yeah, one I, 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 I did it back five guys. I did it backwards. So nine ounces at citizens. 11.1 at five guys. So I, I want you to put in 26 for that. And then uh, five guys, I want you to put in 10. So plus. Uh, uh. Okay, now I want you to put in 28. Plus four. All right. Three restaurants. I had a total. Are you there, Anna? You look like you're frozen up. Anna's frozen. How did that happen? Huh? Anna, can you hear me? Well, this never happens. Let's see if she comes back at some point. Uh, what I'll do while we're waiting for Anna to come back is I'll do an ad for Villa Capelli. Villa Capelli olive oil is the longest running sponsor of this show. They've been with us since the beginning. Villa Capelli. Oh, oh there she goes. Villa Capelli olive oil. Uh, folks, look, when you go out and buy olive oil, it's, um, it's, it, it's cut. It's just cut. It's just what it is. Um, the reason it gets cut is because they could get away with it. You can put 100% pure olive oil on your thing. I don't know if I should press this. Can everyone see this? If I press it, let me let me stop. I, I don't want everyone to see Anna's business in a computer. Hmm. I'm not sure if they can see this or not, but I'll try. Um, I'm trying to do two things at once. So you could cut olive oil up to 40% and still call it pure, natural olive oil. Villa Capelli never does that at all. So go out get Villa Capelli olive oil, let them know we sent you put in promo code Vinny, V I N N I E for the best olive oil on the planet Vinny V I N N I E. And um, let them that'll let them know um, that we sent you guys. And it will also give you a 10% discount. Promo code Vinny, V I N N I E. Uh, all right, so let's see. Anna's asking me if I've lost power. So, no. Oh, there she is. She's back again. Let's see here. <clears throat> Anna? There you are. Yeah, no. I thought, I, I thought you were having problem with your math. And then I was like, oh, wait, it froze because it, <laughs> it's like yeah, he's, yeah. He, can't, he can't get this math problem. Yeah, no, I couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. It's like, what's going on with Anna? Um, it, oh, yours cut off. And then when I tried to call you, it said your call failed. And I tried to text you and the text wouldn't go through to you. Who and knows? then I hit, I did send his text message. So check your phone. Did it go through? I, Anna, I have no idea. Um, Were you recording uh, that whole time? Yeah, I, I did the Villa, Villa Capelli ad. And Great. I was trying to call you. So I was, it was gibberish and everything else. Cool. All right, so hopefully we're still recording. Um, we'll find out. All right, so Anna, you don't end on that five guys cliffhanger, Vinny. Oh, all right, so you did the math, right? What did you come up with in total? I don't know what well, I don't know what math you're trying to do. Are you trying to figure out a per ounce cost? Anna, you have you, 28, 26 and 10. What did you come up with? Are you asking me to add these together? If you would tell me what you're trying to accomplish, I could do the yes, math. Very I, fast. You I, I need tw 28 plus uh -huh. 26 plus 10 for you. 64. OK, 64 dollars. And for that, I got 20.4 ounces of meat. Okay, so I'm dividing 64 by 20.4. That's a per ounce cost of $3.13 per ounce. That's ridiculous. Multiply, multiply that times 16, you're spending $50 a pound on meat. Yeah, yeah. and I, I'm telling you folks, none of it was that good. The salmon was farm raised crap that I got in a restaurant. Yeah. You know, that, that's the reality. Yeah, that's the right. It, it just it doesn't. It, it, it And look, I like to get out of the house. I like to go do things. Of course. And people say, hey, I can't afford. We can't do this and that. I got kids eating at home is so much cheaper. I could get I could, I could get a whole pound, 16 ounces of meat of ground beef, good quality ground beef. Yep. At any of the local stores for about five dollars. I'm saying five. Half the time is on special for three fifty. Yeah. You know, and what does that come to per ounce? Let, let's make it four. Let's make it four twenty-five an ounce, Anna. What does that come to? 
if I'm getting a pound, 16 ounces. Wait, let's say it's $5 for yeah, it's a pound. Five dollars. I'm going to say grass fed around here is more like nine to ten dollars. No, you're I'm, talking about just I'm regular. Talking, I just go regular. Okay. And it, it's five dollars divided by 16 is 31 cents an ounce. OK, so we went. What was it an ounce before? Three dollars and 13 cents an ounce. OK, so literally 100 times more. 100 times more. Yeah, it, it's not worth it for me to even leave the house. It's just not. worth. I mean, you, you need to hear what I'm saying here, folks. This is like. I'm trying to go out there. I'm trying to support local businesses. I get everyone's having a rough time. I get all that. I'm yeah. living in a new community. I'm hoping when I'm out there, I might run into somebody and have a great make, conversation. Make new friends. You know, That's me and Lauren. We need to make friends. We don't know anybody up here. And the only people we know gave us COVID. <laughs> I don't know. Help, anybody. help us. We need Look, friends. Serena was out hiking the other day. She goes out to this waterfall. And, um, you, you know, I, I know the woman's name, so I'm just not going to say her name. Susan. I, I can say her first name. I think it was Catherine. Susan Nan Lynn. So, Catherine. Uh, Serena, you know, she runs, she goes somewhere. It's freezing cold that day. It's like this frozen waterfall. She's out there with her friend that she runs with. And uh, Bonzo is running around. Woman comes up to him. Oh my God, Vishala. I love it. I have a Vishala. I love a Vishala. And somehow she and Serena has a two minute conversation. And she goes, hi, my name is Serena. And at some point, as I think the story goes, she goes, come on, Bonzo, it's time to go. And the woman goes, wait, Serena, Bonzo, it, Vinny, is there Vinny? In it? And she was like, oh, my God, yes, Vinny, her husband. So, I mean, she meets people out there. Yeah. You know, the woman listens to the podcast and the whole thing. And then I see her on Twitter and what have you. Nice. You know, I don't want to meet fans in a restaurant, but I want to. I sat at the bar the night I had that fish. Right. I was hoping that someone would sidle up next to me and, hey, man, you're from here? Ah, I just moved here a couple of years ago. I was thinking about doing a little, you know, a little fly fishing in the spring. What, what, what do you think? You, you know, or whatever the conversation might be. Right. I'm yeah. dying to tell someone about my kayak that I'm building. I know. I want someone to go, hey, man, so what are you up to? I'm building a kayak. Really? Really? Yep. See the strip. Me, me and this guy. Joy Shot. I go over to Joy Shots. And uh, by the way, let me give him a little plug. Turning Point Boat Works. You want any kind of, not just a wooden boat. This guy will make you a carbon fiber boat. He will do anything you need. And he doesn't even pay me to say that. Call Joy Shot Turning Point Boat Works. But I go see Joey every week. I'm dying to tell this to some dude in a bar. Yeah. I can't, you know, I walk Your in a friend. complaining with the managers about, look at this piece of fish. And now everyone's looking at me. Well, there's a guy complaining about the fish. Must be from California. Gotta be. So anyway, <laughs> it drives me nuts, Anna. Well, this will make you feel better. Lauren and I were walking Thanks. in the neighborhood. This will make you feel a lot better. Lauren and I were walking in the neighborhood. We walked up this hill and up to the cul-de-sac and we walked this quite a bit. And people know us now in the neighborhood because we walk all the time. And um, they were out. These people had an American flag and then the Marine Semper Fi flag, right? And they were out on their front porch having their evening glass of wine. And uh, we were <laughs> trudging along, blah, 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 chatting. And then they're like, Hey, have a good night. We're like, hey, have a good night. Hello. And, and of course, Lauren and I are like, oh, my God, people talk to us. This is so exciting. <laughs> and like I was like and their dog, their like black lab ran up and I was like, oh, maybe oh, should I? And I was like, oh, your dog's cute or whatever. And, and then they go, are you in the military? And I said and I quote, nope, but we salute you. And then Lauren does this like weird British lieutenant sort of. <laughs> salute and we're like okay and then they were like yeah <laughs> turned around and walked away and like called the dog away from us and we we're like okay so well, pretty you know, cool. you know we're happening. pretty cool you know what's happening here is um i when i do the phone calls i i walk yeah i walk the neighborhood we have a very small neighborhood here and um you know, I put my earbuds in and I walk, you know, and uh, they say you're supposed to get 10,000 steps. I always get 20,000 steps there. So yeah. it's like a crazy amount of stuff. And um, anyway, how do I say this without sounding weird? 
you know, we moved into this neighborhood and it's small town USA here. Yeah. And we don't know what the neighbors think of us. But you move in, people find out your name, they start Googling. Oh, interesting. Right? So I'm thinking no one knows who we are. Mm hmm. No one. The, the Mrs. Kravitz in the neighborhood, <clears throat> she started coming up to our door every other day going, uh, we, we, here's the email address to get on the neighborhood watch email list and blah, blah, blah. And Serena said, thanks, but no thanks. And then she came back again. And Serena said, yeah, no, we're, we're not going to get on the list. But th thanks for asking us. We, we don't want to get emails and we don't care if someone saw a fox in their yard. That's fine. Oh, I'm obs I'm obs I, uh, are you talking about next door? Because I'm obsessed. I, with there, there's door. a there's a neighborhood. I read they it, have their like own home. Little, no, they have their own little thing here. Oh, OK. Right? And next door so, is similar, but it's obviously a bigger platform. But now we're coming off as the I guess the difficult one day. I, I just finished the podcast. I'm trying to upload the doorbell rings. Oh, it's Gladys. Hmm. Okay. Serena didn't come in. Usually Serena tells me when someone's coming, right? Here she yeah, comes. Who just rings a doorbell and shows up at someone's house? The people in this neighborhood. Woman shows up again. We don't do that. I, I, I didn't know. I didn't know about the first two times with Serena. No idea. Mm -hmm. So I open the door. There's a woman nicely made up. She's put together. She's an older woman. And she goes, hi, you must be Vinny. And I said, I must be. Um, how are you? And she goes, I'm your neighbor. You know, let's call her Mrs. Kravitz because she's the Mrs. Kravitz of the neighborhood. Yeah. And I went, hi, Mrs. Kravitz. How, you know, and she goes, um, <clears throat> listen, um, you know, you guys, we, we haven't seen where you've signed up for the, the local, you know, the two streets here. The watch. The watch. And I'm like, oh, um, because I don't know. I don't know how this works, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I'm always in the dark and I went, oh, you know, my wife's not here right now, but she generally handles all of that. She goes, yeah, I've asked her. And um, I said, well, you know what? We've been really busy. I don't know if you could tell we're still trying to move in and I'm I'm downstairs working right now, but give me your name and I'll write it down. And when Serena comes in, I'll have her contact you. <laughs> Put it on Serena. <laughs> Just. I told Serena, it's I said, her hey, problem now. Serena is a very nice lady from down the street. She goes, what's her name? And I told her name. She, she goes, I told her no twice. I, I don't know. You know, we don't want to be on the list. Right? right. And that's when I started wondering, what are, what are the people in the neighborhood think of us, right? We're well, not, they're not going to think very highly of you if you won't jo join the watch list that everyone else is on. Well, now I know what they think of us. Um, the neighbors directly next door to us, they became our friends. The, mm -hmm. the ones that have the four boys. Right. And um, we love these people. It's like, well, you know, the other day she goes, yeah, whenever you guys moved in, the word on the street was this older couple is moving. <laughs> We're the older couple. Some 60 plus year old people are moving. in. You should have moved into our neighborhood. You'd be the younger couple. Oh, my God, Anna. And. So we, we got that news. And now I'm figuring out that everyone knows that Serena's an actress. You know, that they, we're Hollywood. Serena's a big time actress. And you ready for this? Mm -hmm. I'm a big time producer. I'm a movie producer. <laughs> oh, man. That's what they think. That's awesome. So when I'm walking down the street, flailing my They hand, think that you're like wheeling and dealing. Get me the girl with the legs. We're going to yeah. put her in our next picture. Yeah, let's get the girl with the gams. Let's get her in here. You know, it's, uh, you know, I, I don't know what they think That's of amazing. It. Yeah, yeah, this is um, this is weird shit where they think I'm a big time Hollywood producer and she's an actress and, um, you know, well, I told you on our next door, the big debate was uh, somebody said that, you know, there's horse crap in the streets, which there's horse crap in the streets here because we live on horse properties, right? And that and it literally was like a 400 comment next door thread. If you don't like it, then you don't move to horse country. Well, we deserve to live in a clean America. Like it was very heated and it was amazing. And another one was um, like it because in North Hollywood, I was on it for about five minutes and I had to get off of it because it was literally like 
a man just chased another man with a machete and a trash can lid <laughs> down my street. I was like, I, I'm not kidding. That was the post. And I was like, nope, dejoin, deactivate, deactivate. And then I joined up here and the first post was, literally the first post I saw was, does anybody have an extra llama to watch my goats? <laughs> I was like, what? Is that code for oh something? God. What are they talking about? But that's what they meant. They were looking for a llama to watch their goats. It's so charming. It's ridiculous. No, the the whole thing is kind of crazy, man. It's like, but we can't make friends because we're always like, "Hey, hi, how are you? Hi, like, yeah. we, come on, a little strong, I guess." Like, no, no, the weirdos who moved in over there. We're just lonely. Just lay back a little bit, and they'll come to you. You'll get Miss Kravitz showing up, thinking you're a Hollywood producer. Um, <laughs> it, it's, all, it's all crazy, Anna, but I want to bring up the, the pig skin. Um, go on. Have you heard about this product at the stores? What is this pig skin? I thought you were oh. talking about football. We're gone. No, I wish that would be a much more sane conversation to have. Um, so it's funny. You know, we get these different the grocery store buyers who do respond because we're trying to get the things in the grocery stores. And by the way, we're now in the Inland Empire at Clark's Nutrition. We're, we're in Ojai. We're moving. We're getting west. We're in places now in Arizona and Tucson and Phoenix and Sedona and Scottsdale. Like it's happening. It just takes so much work and follow up. And that's fine. But um, explain to people who might be hearing this podcast for the first time. Tell them what your product. You, what, well, my what you my product is the Eat Happy Kitchen marinara, the pink crema and the puttanesca. I have three tomato sauces and we're about to launch the three spices and we're about to launch the spicy marinara. So we have these wonderful products that we've talked about for it's a, but we've been in business about a year and a half. And so the amount of progress that we've made to even get into grocery stores is incredible. So we sell direct to consumer, which I love that. However, it'd be better if we could be in grocery stores and people can just walk in and get it because the shipping that it costs that I have to pass along to the consumer, I don't like. So I'm trying to get into grocery stores. And <laughs> so the process is you can't just sell into a grocery store. You got to get a distributor because think of all this, the products at a grocery store. They don't want 4,000 trucks a week delivering products. They want one big truck delivering stuff from their distributors, right? right. You have to get with the distributors. And in order to get the distributors, you got to get stores. So I started with emailing stores and got enough stores so that a, a distributor would be interested. And they basically say, yeah, we'll carry you if you can get the distributor to carry you. So cross that hurdle got product on the shelves of the distributor and then the distributor gives you their list of stores they sell into and then you just start calling emailing dropping off samples and it just takes months and these buyers are inundated with products most of them plant-based snacks or keto explosion at the grocery store crackers and cookies bullshit right right because obviously tomato sauce if you walk into any grocery store in the usa there's a wall of tomato sauce i always say the world doesn't need another tomato sauce however they need to get products that they can trust and you cannot trust the other tomato sauces i know i'm making a great product right no sugar added high quality tomatoes high quality ingredients yada 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 so i have to convince the buyers of this I have to say what I'm using is leverage is, hey, I'm on a podcast. I have people who will walk into your store and shop there because my sauce is on your shelves. That's the only right. leverage I have, Vinny. I don't have experience in the food industry. I have a great product and hopefully y'all will go in and buy it when it's near you. Right. Okay. So I've been going back and forth with this one buyer for so long who's around here. And then finally he writes back and he's like, when are you going to, when are you going to be organic certified? Cause we use organic ingredients, but we can't get the certification. We're too small. We have to work in a co-op kitchen. Right. right. And uh, even though everything is crystal clean, we would not get that organic certification. Right. Uh, and so by the way, we're considering switching tomatoes to an Italian tomato right now. We use California organic tomato. We're considering switching to the San Marzano official San Marzano tomatoes from Italy. And it's less expensive to bring those over from Italy. Wow. And by the way, they're probably higher quality than our organic certified tomatoes here because in Europe, they don't spray their shit with stuff. You know what I mean? They're like, we're just going to grow actual food and not spray chemicals all over it anyway. So side note so he goes when you and i wrote him back we can't get the certification and then he's like well i can't bring you in unless you can get certified and i was like so bothered 
I can't even tell you. Right. Like I'm like, and you can't, you can't like fight. You go, okay, no problem. And I'll, I will, I'll write them back and say, Hey, listen, we can't get the certification. Here's why. And it, you know, please consider taking us on. I know people will come in the store and buy you're the perfect store for this. And I think to myself, of course, the keto explosion at the grocery store things that are mass marketed by the big companies right. get their certification. They get carried right. on the shelves. They'll make millions. Don't worry about them. They're fine. Right. They'll, they'll jump on a fad and do it. And, and so I was in one of their shops a few days ago and I saw this product. And the reason why I'm bringing this up, I completely forgot about this, but then in the uh, administrative Facebook chain that we have with Mark Thompson and Tosh Marin and Allison Sobchak and I don't know if I'm ever saying right. Foxy Hoxie's in there. Stephen right. Crutchfield's in there. We, you know, talk about, you know, what's going on. And she sends a picture of this product called it's pigless. It's called pig out pigless pork rinds and it's plant based. Pork rinds. I have no idea what it is. Well, actually, I do, because I think she sent the ingredients, which I haven't read yet. And it's so funny because she said, I just said, what the fuck very loudly in the grocery store. And I said the same thing. Now I knew that there was like mushroom based ones that are to replicate. Right. And I've not tried them because I'm like, I'm, I just will have pork rinds like, cause I eat meat. So I don't, I don't care. But, uh, so we, I said, I'm going to bring this up because those were in that grocery store. And I was like, really, this is allowed to be in here. But the fact of the matter is it's a trend. It's popular and 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 uh, it's not even that it's like catering to the vegans or the vegetarians. It's catering to the meat eaters who feel guilty because they bought that false bill of goods that it's not OK to eat meat. So Heather, the what's the snack, ingredients? What, you know, the, read it. Yeah. And again, here's where it gets to become a, two, a double edged sword. We want innovation in the food space. We want entrepreneurship. We want people to make money and jobs to be created. Of course, that right. goes without saying. But I, of course, have a personal dog in this fight. Right. When I go, but I have a really, really high quality product. And because I can't get the sticker, I can't get the sticker. That's the reason. But you, then you sell this. It anyway. makes no it makes no sense. I want to hear the ingredients. In this and I haven't product. tasted this. Oh, boy. Oh. Oh, this is not what I, I thought. This is one of the mushroom based ones. I saw that on Shark Tank. They had a mushroom based pork rind, which to me makes a little sense because mushrooms are earthy and maybe you do some process to it to make it crispy. I don't know. Not this rice, high oleic expeller pressed sunflower oil, pea protein, pea grits. OK. Pork rind seasoning, which is pea protein, maltodextrin, yeast extract, sea salt, natural flavors, cane sugar, salt, white distilled vinegar. And then under natural flavors and cane sugar, there is an asterisk and it says derived from vegan sources. And that's okay, what they read the first two ingredients. Rice, sunflower oil, okay. pea protein, uh, pea grits. No, I said the first two. And so, right. It starts with rice. Okay. Yeah. Carbohydrates. It goes right to a seed oil directly right to a seed oil. And then after you get past a couple of pea protein, like pea protein and pea pro protein grits, we get to a sugar. That was there a maltodextrin? What was the first sugar that was in that? In the seasoning, it's pea protein, maltodextrin, yeast extract, sea salt, natural flavors, cane sugar, salt, vinegar. Yeah. There's sugar in it two or three times. There's uh, um, high fructose corn syrup. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I misspoke. Um, there's um, cane sugar, maltodextrin, maltodextrin. There's um, natural flavors that can almost be anything. As I always tell people, natural flavors is is where they can really hide a lot of stuff. It's the number one ingredient. What is most in it is rice, followed by seed oils. This is an abomination of a product that can get in. But Anavocino's sauce that we know is excellent and good for you no can do based on a technicality based a technicality. On a technicality here's the that, deal that's what drives me up i know fucking wall and down the other it really does anna but now, here's the thing i'm pretty zen about you know what screw it it's not the right fit for the place and that's okay 
it's it's kind of like when you're in entertainment, you you have to go meet with a bunch of agents and casting directors, and they're like, I don't get you, not you. And then finally, you hit the one that's like, I like you, I believe in you, I know I I can work well with you. You know what I mean? You just have to start to hit that until finally there's enough critical mass that then everybody's like, Wait, what's that thing? What, who was that brand? Who who is that? Let's get that in here. You know what I mean? You know the you know the routine. Look, I mean, look what happened to me once this show got popular. The guy from Westwood One that started Podcast One comes to me. Oh, you know, we, you know, you're, you know, you, you're a talent. You got a voice. You got this. You got that. And I said to him, wait a minute. I, I went to Westwood One back in 1991. <laughs> oh, if you had seen me, I would have found you. We would have done it. Uh, uh -huh. I can't think of the guy. What, what's the guy's name? The, the big guy that runs. Norm. Norm Pattis. Yeah. And I, I'm in Norm Pattis's office and he said, oh, if we had known about you in 91, oh my God. I was like, yeah, but you didn't. You know, because I, I kept giving you guys my dat tape and you guys kept throwing it out the fucking window. So screw you. That's number one. Number two, you wanted to separate me and Anna. That was number right. two. If, if you guys want to know the truth behind it, he wanted to see, he wanted to give me a contract and bring me in and own this show so that they could decide which ads you could put in this show. And by the way, we want to, we want you. But it's like, well, no, I'm nothing without her. And they're like, no, 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 no. We, 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 well, we got the woman from housewives of, of fucking somewhere and we'll, we'll put you with her. Uh, being a housewife super fan. I feel like you made a mistake. <laughs> I feel like you should have gone and taken that off. I never heard of the Dubrow. except for the ownership part, which that would have sucked. And they would have run Kellogg's ads. You know they would have run Kellogg's. Oh, and, ads. and they said, "I said, do I get to look at the ads?" Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You get to make final decisions. Mm -hmm. And yeah. when I looked at the contract, number one, you know, I looked at the contract. I could never go with it because they wanted to get rid of the star of the show. Number two, uh, you know, it it didn't read the way it was supposed to read. And number three, they were going to make all the profit. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It drives me nuts that these people do this kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, no, 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 you, you're the guy. You're the man. Same shit they do with you and everyone else. We've created this. We're fucking in lockstep, lockstep, and I'll do anything I can to help support you because you've always supported me. It drives Hell me yeah. nuts that these people won't give you, you know, because you got to be in a different kind of kitchen. By the way, can you go into that kitchen we're in? We, 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 we do a kitchen. Where's your stuff made, Anna? Uh, my stuff's made in Tennessee. See, my stuff is made in Los Angeles. Um, is we're, there a way? We're going to, the spices are going to be certified organic because we're able to do those in a manufacturing plant that can get um, certified. Okay. No, that, that's good. Because... I, I don't, here's the thing though. I'm not touching the number one thing and the thing that I've learned over the years, when you have a good product, don't mess with it. Don't change out ingredients because you want to make it cheaper. Don't mess around with the thing. And Mike Weeks is going to have to croak before I stop making with him because he makes the most excellent product. Do you know how amazing it is to find a partner in manufacturing who could do that? Because it took me forever to find it with the spices. Right. Right. You know, I've been talking about this for a year and a half. We've been in R&D. Yeah. Oh, and look, I mean, I'm not sacrificing the taste or the ingredients. And in fact, the considering switching over the Italian tomatoes, it has to taste exactly like what it tastes now. And if it doesn't, we won't be able to do that. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, it's fine. Listen, we chose to be in this business of podcasting. We chose to be in this business of the food stuff. I just like to share it because I, I just feel like not enough people talk about it. And, and by the way, now I know that phrase of, um, if it was easy, everybody would do it. Oh, yeah. Look, we're going through it right now where we can't get enough qualified help and people are going, yeah. uh, you, your, your customer service, you know, your products are incredible. Customer, I, yeah, I got people trying to ship stuff out because we're that busy. And sometimes they, they don't answer and they don't pick up the phone because everyone is running around like a Chinese fire drill over there. And, you know, we just don't have enough people to go around. We're hiring as fast as we can. Finding qualified people Unlike the guy at uh, Five Guys who can't figure out what a quarter of a pound is. <laughs> well, yeah. that's that's just, just a math problem. Yeah, and look, we're Literally getting Literally and figuratively. We're getting there. Um, but folks, uh, look, Anna, let, let's call it there because I'm driving myself nuts there. I'm sorry. We, we got to call Everybody it Everybody go oh. get the pigless pork rinds. So Yeah, go buy that shit. That. 
Alexander <laughs> Paul and Rick crackers. Paul will thank you. And uh, James Cameron will love you. And Michael Grieger will love you. Go get the porkless pig crap. And while you're at the store, look around for Anna Vecino stuff. She is, uh, her stuff is called Eat Happy Kitchen. Dot com. If you want to go to dot com and pick it up right now, you can get it. Eathappykitchen.com. She also has, um, you, you know, oh, ultra fat. You don't sell that at Europe. No, I don't. But I'm telling you to tell the people to get their ultra fat. Are you guys oh. caught up on, on fulfillment? Because I yeah, know you said we're, we're getting there. That, that product is so popular. It's so good. I'm begging you. I'm telling people. you, Vinny, I go to the nut butter aisle in every, I go into a lot of grocery stores. Okay. And I go to the nut butter aisle and everyone, because I'm also hungry when I go into the grocery store and I wish I had an ultra fat, by the way, we just got a shipment and I'm, I'm literally dosing them out, like rationing them out. I go to the nut butter aisle to see if there's a product like, and there's nothing like it. This is going to sweep the nation, Vinny. Well, we shall see. Um, we're or going at least to a big sweep convention. sweep my nation. Yeah, it sweeps Anna's nation every mm -hmm. time. She did a bunk And I am I am a part of the rhythm nation. But I wait, want everyone to you, know that. What's that called? The bung flu? What did you do? Mukbang. Mukbang. Mm -hmm. um, next week, folks, I will do a mukbang of uh, Anna. Anna, you got to remind me to bring some sauce down here when we... Okay. Uh, you know, oh, ooh, wait, hang on. I got a problem. I, I don't want to open. I still have the... Um, I got to right. buy some more. I, I got to buy some more because I only have the pumpkin left and I'm hanging on to it. I'm, I'm letting don't it. open the pumpkin. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to do that. It's all right. I got you. I'm writing them right now. Tell them to send you more. Um, send me the uh, crema. Just one, one crema and I'll, I'll muck. Settle, settle down pumpkin. I got you. I will mug bung the crap out of that on the show. Yeah. Um, folks go check out uh, eat happy kitchen, eat happy, the book and eat happy Two. spell T O O. And I have trouble. I can't spell good, but my math is awesome. Yeah, she can she can add up three numbers and tell me exactly on a calculator. To do. Yeah, look at her. Uh, you know what I'm doing? You know, I got the NSNG foods that Anna was eating. She was mug the crap out of one of those. Yeah, I'm mug you know, shit. We got the it. coffee company. I was, I was drinking one of the coffees doing it. Doing <gasps> I had athletic blend today and I I'm thinking of now adding on the double French so I get both a month. Uh, um, my, I, I had the house blend here tonight and, uh, mm. it's all good. People love that honey process. So we sell the most of that honey process and, and folks, uh, go check out before you go to Amazon, please go to vinnytotters.com. It puts coal on the fire and it gets my train down the track and I'm able to keep this show free. We also have the super fan page at vinnytotters.com. You guys can go check that out.